we had 3,000 agents just now. I was just here. This is a coin. I don't know if you can see it, but this is from the United Nations General Assembly that was just in uh, New York City. We had 3,000 Secret Service agents there protecting all the dignitaries that come into that city and along, uh, you know, co-working with the New York City Police Department, the FBI, and other agencies. They provide a blanket of security. There was no issues this time. And I thank God for that. You know, anything could happen at any moment. Hello and welcome to Along the Way Life's Journey. We're back again on our podcast that we shoot and reveal every Wednesday morning. Our guest today is a favorite on the show, which is why he's back for the third time. The third time. Now, this Great. is my, the, my good friend, Walter Santos. Three of them. Third time. Three of them. Three. Third toy. Toy, toy, toy. Toy, toy, toy. That's where he grew up. But anyway, <laughs> we're, we're going to have a little a little variance today from the usual show, and the variance is that uh, we're going to be chatting about with Walt about his uh, his current activities and about his past a little bit, and interspersed throughout the show, we're going to be showing clips of him singing with prominent people and photographs of him from the old days when I knew him when he was a big papa bear with that big beard. And, <laughs> <laughs> the whole thing like that. Santos Claus. The Santo Claus, right. Yeah. And um, I'm sure you're going to enjoy it. You're going to have a good time with this. And I encourage you to tell your friends and have them look in and see the show because uh, he never ceases to amaze me. Never. The man is just gifted. God, it just flows through him. And uh, I want to just point out today that uh, another change in today's show is we have a sponsor. We're being brought to you by Hurricane Ian. It was right on our doorstep. <laughs> so if, wow. you hear some, if you hear some thunder in the background, that's either one of two things. That's either the, the gang of fans running to get tickets to Santos's next show, which is very possible, <laughs> or, or it's God giving us a little thunder and lightning in the background. But that's okay. He will prevail. Right. He'll carry us through the whole thing. So my dear that's brother, right. how are you today? Oh man, I've been busier than ever. I just turned this month. I turned seventy-three. Count them, seventy-three years. When I look back, Carl, I can't believe how fast it went. You know, it seems like yesterday I was in the front row of high school, thinking that I knew everything. How uh, well and I know. Now that. I'm seventy-three years old. My teeth are like stars. They come out at night, and and God is <laughs> God is using me. I mean, the music is playing so fast, I can't keep up with the dancing. But God's given me the energy and the help to help other people. And that's where the gem is right there, helping other people, just like you're doing right here. You are, you are a wonder. You know, I talk about you to everyone I know. Everybody says, oh yeah, I know him. Or if they say, no, I never heard of him. I say, watch the show. You're going to meet somebody <laughs> wonderful. You're going to meet somebody wonderful. Oh Lord. You really are. And I, and I want to officially go online here to thank you for providing us with our recent guest, John, who was just, Incredible, you know, amazing, amazing man, amazing. paratrooper to 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 preacher, he, and he lives the word. He walks the walk. He he's the real thing. The real that's thing. the real deal. That's why I put him on we wave out to you today. Yeah, John, we, we love hi. you, brother. We pray for you. So, Walter Santos, who formerly was uh, Big Bear brother with the big beard and the whole thing and all those <laughs> and all the rock and roll and played with the the all the greats of the greats and oh, that's uh, amazing now you are not only a pastor of your local church right. you're a chaplain for for united states secret service and yes. recently homeland security yeah recently homeland security that which covers a big wide multitude i don't get into the politics and that's the funny thing you know everybody says how could you work for the government or whatever whatever everybody shout not the bullhorn but i focus on one thing helping people and i love to help the folks that you know protect us right. uh, that starts with our local police department in the town where my church is lacy christian assembly we're in fork and river new jersey right on the jersey shore and uh, i'm the uh, town chaplain for the lo local police department in ocean county there lacy township and on the federal level the united states secret service which has many many agents and we had 3,000 agents just now. I was just here. This is a coin. I don't know if you can see it, but this is from the United Nations General Assembly 
that was just in uh, New York City. We had 3,000 Secret Service agents there protecting all the dignitaries that come into that city. And along, uh, you know, co-working with the New York City Police Department, the FBI, and other agencies. They provide a blanket of security. There was no issues this time. And I thank God for that. They, you know, right. anything could happen at any moment. Right. And when you think about it, when you go to bed tonight, just think about who's, who are you going to call if something goes awry? That's right. And, and That's so right. We, need to, we need to support and help them. And I get a chance to do that spiritually speaking with uh, Homeland Security and all the agencies I work with. Even the uh, American Red Cross is a disaster chaplain for civilians. And I never thought I'd be doing something like this because I was such a grade A knucklehead when I was growing up. <laughs> but, God, but little did I know that God was preparing me through all the insanity and all the ups and downs that I went through was all preparation for what he has me doing now. That's why if you're struggling today, consider it a, a teaching moment. I know that's hard to swallow when you're in the, the middle of it. But think about it. That's what God does. He takes the, the things that we go through and uses it. When we turn our, our lives over to him, he uses it as a, a staging platform to help other people. And there's the key. Help how, well, the how well I know that. You know, even in my own life, I know that I never deserved or could be possibly be what he created me to be. And I know yes. that I was told years ago who God qualifi qualifies, he authorizes, he qualifies. If he puts you in a position to do something, he's going to give you the ability to do it. You just exactly. open up to him and he will he will move you through mountains if necessary. How well yeah. I know that. No, so, yeah, I think about John Lee. Yeah, look at what he went through. And, and yeah. it's never too late. Just turn it over. Today's the day. And I'm so glad I met you, Carl, because I've learned so much from you and, and your the, the mindset that God gave you. You know how to put all the pieces together. That's why you're very successful at what you do. And it's such an honor to be here with you today. Thank you. We're we're very pleased because Hey, folks, we started this in January. We now wow. have 50 shows under our belt. Amazing. We have almost 900 subscribers. Terrific. I know somebody who's been at it for a few years. He's got a couple of hundred shows, and he just broke a 1,000. And I'm right wow. at your heels, man. I'm going to get that 1,000 <laughs> because this is a tribute and, a, and a, an acknowledgement that God will move mountains. He will Stick make, with the winners. He will make everything happen, you know? A year exactly. and a half ago, I didn't even know what a podcast was. Somebody said to me, do a podcast. I said, <laughs> podcast. what is a podcast? I didn't know what that was. And today I are one. So, you know, this is, the way, this is the way it goes. So you were at the UN. And uh, I have to say, in, in acknowledgement of what you said a moment ago, you know, I'm one of those people who is, I am critical of the current administration and a lot of the things they do. Right. However, having said that, I am tremendously favorable for all our men and women in service who provide security for this country on the exactly. on the on the federal level, way down to the grassroots and the home level here in the streets. Because those right. rank and file people are not the people who are turning their back. They're the ones who are running into buildings. They're the ones right. that are saving children. They're the ones that show up at an automobile accident right after it happens and, and create Thank the bleeding. God. They're the ones that are really God's hands on this earth. That's and we right. have to we have to support them and bless them, regardless of what those idiots in Washington say, we have to give them our support and let them know we're right. Reading. So that's I'm, right. I'm one hundred percent in favor of that. One hundred That's great. That's what it takes. So you did you see anything interesting while you were at the UN? Well, you know, I, I wasn't at the United Nations per se because that's a lockdown zone. You can't even get near there. I'm yeah. telling you, boy, they locked down those streets in New York, and that's gridlock alert and everything. I stay where the uh, the agents are staying, and that's a secret location. We They set up a whole uh, headquarters in New York City, boy, and they, you should see this operation. It's amazing how good they are at their job. And they've been like that for many, many years, and they keep improving and, and going with the the new threats that come out, and there's so many. But yeah. uh, I saw so many uh, uh, great people, all different walks of life that serve in that agency, uh, from uh, uh, ladies that are moms and uh, fathers and to single people and even the canine unit. I was on one of the floors at the, uh, at the building that I was at, and here come the canines down there sniffing the rug and everything. And I, 
I had an extra donut in my pocket, and they busted me. <laughs> I thought the dog was going to rip my leg off to get at that donut. <laughs> but there's oh, there's always so many interesting things. I mean, it's it's incredible how the vehicles that they use, and and if you just look at uh, how they protect their dignitaries, whether it's the the president, the POTUS, uh, and, and you look at the vehicles and the, and the equipment, them it's it, he's the most important person in the world, and uh, they protect him. In that case, and you know, you look at the uh, track record, and they've done amazing jobs. No matter who's in the White House, That's they right. protect that facility and that person That's and the right. family. That's right. So what we do is we get them because they they're human too, and they have needs. Right. And so we do everything we can to hold their arms up and make sure that they're mentally and in my case spiritually uh, fit. And you know, I don't proselytize. I don't beat people over the head with this book, the Bible. That's my guidebook. I, I, I'm a listening ear and I do this, whether I'm in the Red Cross shelter or I'm in the uh, federal agency, I'm a presence and I represent, I'm a representative of the Lord. That's and right. so God is full of compassion and mercy and uh, just sometimes sitting with somebody and holding their hand or maybe giving them a bottle of water. Yeah. Uh, they look at you and they go, thank you so much. And before you know it, we're having a conversation and that leads into the area that I'm an expert at. Because I've been there. You want to know the road ahead? Talk to somebody coming We've back. Been there, right? I, you know, how many times do I say this? People have said to me, you know, you were success in your business. And I said, that's because I knew enough to be a sponge, to exactly. grow, to gather in from people. And with, in business, that meant as you're going up the ladder, you meet people coming down that same ladder exactly. who've been there before you. Make sure you talk to them, make sure you learn from them. Because, you know, the white hair is supposed to be wisdom. The wisdom is to listen. That's why right. God gave us two ears and one mouth. Shut your mouth. And that's so hard for New Yorkers because we oh. love to talk. Oh, man. Oh. With, you know, the Italians call it gacchiron. I mean, like a duck. Gacchiron, you know? And we have that tendency, I know. But I have to I have to condition myself not to do that. Yes, me too. Me too. I have to condition myself because... It's very important to hear what's being said. And sometimes it's that still, small whisper. Wow. And if you don't listen intently and hear it. Exactly. Lose, That's what I do every morning. You lose that pearl of wisdom. You must listen. Yes. There's nothing yes. wrong with a period of silence in your life where you just sit and listen. Switching gears on you. I uh, recently became a pastor of a church and a lot of senior citizens in my uh, my uh, care. And so now I'm a teacher of the word of God. And, and as I sit and prepare messages, I'm learning so much as I sit and meditate on God's word. It's so powerful. I never knew that. So I've been taking these people through a regimented course of what I call the mariner's wheel. You know, a ship's wheel that you yeah. steer the ship yeah, with. Sure. And, and it consists of five five spokes. Uh, the Word of God, prayer, witnessing, giving, and uh, um, uh, prayer, uh, prayer, fellowship. I'm sorry, fellowship, prayer, witnessing, giving, and uh, 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 the Word of God. Word of God. So as I do the five basics, everything comes into line. You, 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 you'll be, live in the right house, have the right bank account as you seek Him first. And I'm teaching this to the the, the uh, people, and now I'm starting to see them grow and starting to love each other and care for each other, and 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 not be uh, pulled to and fro as they watch the six o'clock blues. I mean the news, yeah. <laughs> because you know it it'll tear you apart. It'll have you yeah. so full of fear. But God's word is calming and still. So that's what I'm able to do now. And boy, it really helps me get rooted and grounded in Him. And that's so that's so important in the days that we live in. Yes. And, you know, we started a new church recently. It's nearby. We don't go to the big giant one anymore. We go to the smaller one nearby. And they have community alive. there, uh, And I love it. I just love it. They have a men's group that is so vital. I, it's, it, they meet on Monday night, and I went last night. In spite of beautiful. the storm and all the rain, there were probably 120 men showed up. Beautiful. 120 men showed up and we have iron a, sharpens uh, iron exactly we get a presentation then we break in, we break into small groups and we discuss it and it, it's it's a core of fellowship beyond anything that i've ever experienced before these are they really 
you know, in the in the rooms, in the recovery rooms, they tell you everything stays there, everything is confidential. You know, you right. You know, and the, the, you, you and all this, and you go through all the twelve steps. But this is a group of men who are so committed to their walk with Christ. They share with one another. They support one another. They wow. encourage one another. And, and so, so last last night they said, "Okay, guys, we're going to form two lines here. One of them." Those who can sign up to be available to help people with the hurricane before it hits. And this line over here is going to be for those of us who will be in in ready to go to tamper if necessary. So all squad of these younger guys, I mean. Beautiful. You know, if I go, I know why I'm going to go. It's going to be, yeah. I'll tell you that story in a minute. But, exactly. but these younger guys are fit guys, you know, and they would go and they do everything. They have gone, That's for, awesome. you know, for earthquake relief, and they've done all this kind of stuff, you know. That's great. Solid, solid people, and I just love it. I love it. So I was thinking to myself, well, you know, you're you're an old man. You're you're eighty years old. You're gonna <laughs> you're gonna get in the way. You can't you can't you know. Look, I I get this stuff now where where my my arms. Me too. Stuff. Me too. Oh, they're, they're bleeding or uh, you, you can't be in the way. You got to be. And then I thought to myself, I reminded right. myself of a story. And I've told this story online before. Yes. When Hurricane Andrew hit, we had a caravan of trucks loading to go down south to bring goods to people who were stranded down there. Yeah. And we had a, four or five trucks. And people came from all directions, all kinds of people, to bring things. And we were loading them on the trucks. And I was on on the, uh, the back lift of the truck there. And I noticed there was this little old lady walking through the crowd little old lady she must have been 80 years old and she could barely walk but she had a shopping bag and in her right hand she had a bottle mister with water and she'd wow. go up she'd go up to the people working and i remind you hurricane andrew was in august it was sweltering yeah. hot oh she'd man go up and she'd She'd miss the people's faces and wipe the sweat off their face, you know, and wow. go on to the next one. And then after a while, she'd disappear for a few minutes, and then she'd come back because she refilled the water bottles. Wow. So she precious. came back, and she came to me at one point. I'm on the tailgate of the truck, and she goes like this, and I reach, I go down, and she sprays my face with the water. And it was very refreshing, and I thought to myself, oh, praise just, God. just thought to myself, living water, you know, the refreshment of God's exactly. water. Exactly. And so when I when I leaned down and she did it, she reached her hand up to do it. I noticed she had tattoos of numbers. Wow! She was a Holocaust survivor. Wow! And there she was, doing whatever she could. Oh that man! You got to find out to get her on the show. Oh, wow! She's long gone. I mean, I know. I know. Isn't <laughs> that, that amazing? You know, what but, a story! Well, that's the that's the message that was given to me. If they right. go, even if I go with a water bottle, exactly, do my share. You do got something to share. offer. That's what. It, that's it. That's it. You know? And you, of all people, you've got a lot of wisdom and knowledge, and that's great. And those young guys need that. Yeah, yeah, they do. Don't remove the ancient landmarks. And uh, unfortunately, we're ancient landmarks, Carl. But yeah. you know what? We got a lot to offer. That's right. That's thank right. God. That's right. Thank God. Okay, so we're going to be showing some of your videos today. You want to wow. talk about some of the stuff that you submitted and just oh, the man, background yeah. about what you're going to see? Yeah, it's uh, not so much quality videos, but it's a little snapshot of the ministry that God's given me. And it's been an amazing journey so far. It all kicked off years ago. I was on a plane. I think I was with, uh, I was on the road and I was catching a plane back to somewhere and they bumped me up to first class. Oh boy, thank you. And so I'm sitting in the first class, two seats on each side. And I look to my left and there's this little black gentleman sitting there with a suit on and I'm looking at him and I'm saying, I, I interrupt. I say, excuse me, sir, you look familiar. Do I know you? And he's saying, oh, I'm an author and I write books. And I said, no, are you really Alex Haley? It was Alex Haley who created the first mini series on TV Roots. called Roots. Yeah, yeah. And man, we struck up a conversation. And let me tell you, I, I was able to express to him how that show calibrated me and changed the way I thought and saw things of how, you know, the, 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 the suffering that the black people went through 
uh, from Africa all the way to the journey here, but which was that mini series was all about. And so we had a beautiful conversation and I started telling him about my story and he looked at me and he said, I could do another mini series on your life. <laughs> and uh, they really encouraged me to tell my story and he said, get it into a book. And so I'm still in the process of doing that. But you know what? It was such a, a, a unique time. And then he was telling me about his faith walk on how he gave his heart to God, just like I did. And and so there, that that kind of kicked it off. And after that, I started to travel and sing all over the place. And I put together a couple of video clips here of uh, different places, high schools, where I go and speak to the young people. And I get to use the music, the doo-wop, that uh, picture behind me, you see it standing there. That's uh, I give them a little sample of that when I, when I go in to do the chapels at high schools. But I'm also able to tell them where I was, what happened, and what I'm like now. And that's right. the three key points that I hit on. And, or then I'll go to a nursing home. And I'm talking to people with 10 minutes left on the life clock. Yeah. And I tell them, you got to prepare for your future. And they look at me like I'm crazy. And I say, you have a future. And I say, let's read about it. And I take them to the book and how God's prepared a place for us. And the important thing is to get to know God. How do you do that? You say this simple prayer, open your heart up to him. And so from there, I go to prison. And then I'm in a, a lockdown ward. A few months back, I was in a prison and they, they put me into the secure housing unit. That's the part of the prison where everybody's in a lockdown cell. They don't come out. They're in there for 24 hours a day because of behavior issues or whatever. And I'm able to speak to them through a little door where they get their food. And I'm able to talk to them there and, and express to them about how God's taken me. And I say, can I sing you a song? And I start singing. So these are little clips of different little uh, minute, you know, like a little taste of what I do in each place. Uh, uh, whether it's in a church service and uh, whether it's in a, uh, a a lineup room where I'm in the police department, these guys are ready to hit the street. And the sergeant says, Santos, give them a good word. And I'll tell them a little bit of uh, a word to encourage their day. And I say, can I sing to you a song? And they're looking at me like I'm crazy because these guys are thinking about going out in the street and they're all like geared up. And I'll sing in uh, Stand By Me and I'll put some lyrics in there. And then, before you know it, they're swaying and they're laughing yeah. and they're cool. And then uh, one more, uh, hospice. Now, who would think to go to hospice and sing? Mm -hmm. I'd been asked by families to come when they were pulling the plug on a loved one and asked me to sing a, a song. And I'll come in and I'll have my little boom box with me. And I'll sing uh, softly and tenderly, Jesus is calling. And they all g grab hands and they sing with me as their loved one is departing this earth. And I look at that and I look back at my life and I go, thank you, Lord, for the richness of the tapestry of the life that you've given me. And it's not over yet. I mean, yeah. I'm in a different, <laughs> and it's just keep going here, you know, and yeah, I look at the kid, that, you know, in modern science, you can go on another 25, 30 years. <laughs> I know my trainer always says to me, how old would you feel if you didn't know how old you were? And that's right. a key point. You right. don't look at your age. How do you right. feel? With the America and the land is dark and the Lord he is the only light we see His friends call him Santos. As a percussionist, he's recorded with and shared the stage with greats like Charlie Daniels, Weather Report, and George Benson. He also developed a habit of using drugs. Thought I was bad and I had to get good. Thought I was smart, but I misunderstood. Felt I was weak and I had to get strong. I was sure I was right, yeah, then I found I was wrong. Thought I was lost and I had to get back. They called me square, so I tried to get round. Felt I was lazy and I had to get busy. I swore I was high, but I was just plain dizzy. 
Now I really, really know I I never, never, never knew before before. God come knocking at my house I finally opened up the door to the casa He came in I was all messed up doing heroin Didn't know who I was, where I was going Did you ever feel like that? Well, Jesus is talking to you. Come on home. You got to surrender. I was beat down all the way. Yeah. Help me, Jesus. interview room and he said you need to get right with God right now and I got on my knees and I got right with God that day one of them was a picture of you with the percussions when you were in full oh wow band. that was you know where that was taken that was taken at Jimi Hendrix studio in New York City called Electric wow. Lady Land wow of a historic recording studio I mean I've had uh, I've done movie soundtracks I played at Carnegie Hall I played at all the venues, Radio City Music Hall with Dion, the one that led me to the Lord that really kind of launched my life into this ministry of service. And it all began with the the wanderer of all people, Dion DeMuti, whose whose, uh, new story is on Broadway. I think it's going to be opening this year on Broadway called The Wanderer. Yeah. And he is sold out for Christ as well. Exactly. Uh, He's sold out for Christ. Always helping people. Yeah. And then there was a clip that you submitted last minute, and I was watching it. It looked like it was a professional television interview. Oh, yes. Yes. I didn't get my back friend, on it. My, my good friend, Jeannie Ortega, has a Latin version of a, a show called In the Mix, and she brought me on to talk about addiction, and I got a chance to sing the song that Dion wrote about his life, and yeah. it's on my album, and it's the song that changed my life. So what we do is we light a candle as we go along. We light somebody up. And that show was done at uh, the TBN studio in Orlando, not too far from where you're at. Well, you have certainly had a long and prosperous career in terms of God's work. Thank God for that. He has reached in and rescued you a number of times, I know, but you are one of his children. He saved you, and that's it. No, and if there's back. anybody out there that needs have a lo- and everybody knows somebody that's hurting uh, yeah. on my website, santosministries.org is an addiction page that has all kinds of links to uh, Christian recovery around the nation. So take advantage of that resource on santosministries.org. So any last comments you want to make before I make a comment to the, to the folks? Yeah, unfortunately, get those storm shutters out, put them up on the house and uh, say your prayer that. Lord, we pray that this storm would not do a lot of damage to people. Save them and keep them safe, Lord. 
And thank you for everybody listening to this great, great podcast with Carl. We love you. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. So, folks, that's it for today. I remind you, we do a new show. We come out with a new show every Wednesday morning. Keep watching. The numbers are growing up like crazy. We're very thankful. Uh, I'll put in a small plug for my book back there, which is to every page of turning. That book is the sponsor of this show. Every penny that's made from that book goes into this show or into some other charitable work. We don't we don't profit from it at all. It's for benefit of other people. So if you haven't read the book, I encourage you get the book and read it. Give it as a gift for this holiday. It, it's it's a it's a short read, but it's a wonderful read. If you know, I say to myself, beautiful. I have heard so many people report back on how it touched their lives. So I encourage awesome. you to do it. I really encourage you to do it. And if you know someone that you'd like to recommend for the show, write in, let us know. Santos and I will talk to them together. And Definitely. <laughs> and, Definitely. We'll have, and we'll have a, a guest on the show. We've had a number of people who have been submitted in recent weeks that uh, have been submitted by other people, and they've all been terrific. Terrific, Excellent. really. So um, I remind you also, you have your own story to tell. It's unique to you. No one can tell you a story like you can. Don't expect someone else to do it. Tell your loved ones. Tell your friends. Write it down. Share it. Because when it's too late, it's too late. And the world will have lost the value of what you have to say. Tell your story. Pass it on. Remember, especially those of us who are getting on in years, we are the arbiters of truth for the younger generation. Pass it on. Pass it on. So I say every week, and I say especially to my brother here, who I do this when he's in front of me, I give him a big botch. That's a tad if a kiss. Tell someone you love him today. Very important. I love you, Santos. Uh, That's how it is with God's love. Once you've experienced it, pass it on. Amen. We love you, Carl. Ciao, folks. Ciao, Bambino. See you soon, boy. Thank you for tuning into the show. I hope that it resonated with you. It certainly did with me. And I hope it encouraged you to realize the true power of your story. As a reminder, new episodes will be released Wednesday mornings on your favorite podcast apps and also on YouTube as well. Be sure to like, subscribe, and turn your notification button on to ensure that you receive updates on new episode releases. I'm grateful for your reviews and your support. The love is certainly felt. Keep it coming. You can reach out to connect with me on Instagram, Facebook, and LinkedIn. Or stop by my website to everypageofturning.com. All links are clickable in the show notes for quick access. Do you think that you or someone you know may be our most inspiring guest yet? Let's hope so. Click on our contact page and get in touch on my website and share your story. I look forward to reading each one person. My best-selling book, To Every Page of Turning, which was published by Mascot Books, is available on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, Target, and many more popular book retailers. Thank you so much for tuning in today. Till next time, remember that every day is a new opportunity to write your new page in your incredible journey. And it is incredible. You're the only one who has it.